to the Weather Channel. But if you want to watch the new baby hyena there at the Hattiesburg Zoo, you're going to have to head down to the Pine Belt. But Kristen is joining us today to give us a little bit more information about the little, I guess, is he considered a cub, Kristen? Yes, ma'am, it is considered a cub. You can also call them pups or whelps. Aw, oh, well, like whelps, like with a P? I'm sorry, you're kind of cutting out a little bit. That's okay. Can you hear me? Is this good? I was going to say, well, I've never heard of whelps. I've heard of cubs, but I learned a new word today. But we're also learning the gender of this precious cub. Take us back, though, to October the 17th. You guys had an exciting day there at the Hattiesburg Zoo. Yes, ma'am, we sure did. We had a little our little first cub born here um, at the Hattiesburg Zoo um, at around around 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, that happened. We were super excited about it. But, of course, we had no idea if it was a boy or a girl. Um, and that sort of didn't come until much, much later. As we, you know, the cub is about three months old now, and we're just now learning the gender. But it was an exciting day for all of us. It's the only surviving cub um, from the species survival program. So we are super excited to be a part of it. And then you guys were super excited to give the mom and I guess dad hyena the opportunity to have its very own human-like gender reveal party, which I thought was really cute and unique. (laughs) How did you guys go about deciding how to let the world know what baby H was going to be? So it uh, it took a lot of planning. Um, My assistant curator and I sort of came up with the idea of a gender reveal and kind of figuring out how we were going to do that was a little bit more complicated um, because we wanted to make sure that the public could actually see what the gender was so we couldn't just let our mom rip open something. So we had to be a little bit more creative. So we created a box that had um, just some packing paper on the bottom of it and a a rope made out of braided packing paper and tied a a chicken leg to that. And when she pulled it, all of the blue confetti came out. So super excited that uh, little baby boy, um, super cute (laughs) and full of energy and excitement. So was the dad excited or was the mom, you know, pleased to see blue paper? I know I'm kidding. (laughs) They were a little bit like, what is that? (laughs) Falling falling from the box. um. So dad was kept inside while that was happening. We had a pretty big group around and he gets a little bit nervous around big crowds of people, but mom loves everybody. So she had to come over and say hey to everybody else first before she even interacted with the box. So, um, but yeah, it was a pretty exciting time. Little baby Keto, that's his name, is K-I-T-O, um, which means Precious Child in Swahili, was out on exhibit with her and participated in the, in the gender reveal. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It took her about an hour, really, to get the box open. <laughs> so she was more interested in her friends coming to see her than she was finding out the gender of her baby. Um, Although I'm thinking that she probably already knew what it was. It was the rest of us that were... We're waiting on pins and needles. I was going to say, a mom who enjoys a party, you can't you can't necessarily <laughs> hate that. And like everything, as long as the baby's healthy, whether it's a girl or a boy, everybody's excited. But from y'all's perspective there at the zoo, does it lend itself to you guys being able to continue the, um, the programs there of being able to make more baby hyenas, whether it was a girl or a boy? Uh, the offspring gender only matters in the fact that the um, the species survival program will tell us kind of where we go from here. So obviously any offspring that we have, because our two adult hyenas are so high up in the breeding population, it will eventually move on to another zoo to uh, reproduce in that zoo to create even larger genetic genetic diversity in um in the world of hyenas. So eventually we will have more cubs. Yes, that is the plan is for us to breed more. That is what they are here for Um, beyond being really cute and just fun to look at. They are here for a purpose and that purpose is to create a larger pool of genetic diversity in hyenas. How often can mama have cubs or I guess in terms of healthy, like how how far will y'all space that out? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, A hyena can have cubs every year. Ideally, you want it to be around every two years, two to three years. Um, But, you know, they are wild animals. And while birth control is sort of an option, it's not really done often in hyenas unless um, birthing does not go well for for that particular pair. Because they're just not quite sure. There's not a lot of study done in how it really reacts with a hyena. So we'll sort of let nature take its course and uh, kind of see what what we get (laughs) from here. If I had to guess, it'll still be a little while before she's ready to have any more cubs. Um, She's still nursing the baby, so um, that prolongs her not having any more cubs as well. So 
that's kind of where we're at with them. Uh, right now, we're just happy to enjoy our little baby boy. Who's Keto? That's his name. What's the mom and dad's name? Remind us the little family there. I'm sorry, say that again. What's the mom and dad's name? Mama's name is Peely, P-I-L-I, and Dad's name is Niru, N-I-R-U, and they are a perfect little family. It's been really, really rewarding to see uh, Keto interact with his dad. They've become sick as thieves, playing all the time. Um, even Dad's instigating play now with the baby, which is just really, really great to see. We honestly could not have asked it to go any better than what we got out of um, out of this birthing process. It's been really, really amazing. Now, Kristen, whenever you joined us here on Good Things to talk about the incredible birth, we weren't able to see, now we know Keto, the little boy, um, if we were a visitor there at Zoo. Has that changed? Has Keto kind of made his way out to, for, for friends and family to see him as well? Yes, ma'am. He is out on exhibit every single day that we are open. Um, Sometimes you'll see him out playing and running around. Other times you'll see him sleeping next to mom or sleeping on top of mom because really you never get too big to sleep, to not sleep in mom's lap. So he's always kind of on her or he's playing with his dad. Um, Sometimes he'll be inside the den. Sometimes you got to really, really look for him because he is still kind of a darker color than his parents. He's starting to get those spots um, in, but that takes anywhere between three to month to a year for them to fully come in. So he's out on exhibit. Uh, he really, really enjoys people. He likes to come up to the windows and see people. So it's a, it's a fun time for our guests right now. Now, the Hattiesburg Zoo has always been a great maternity ward. I don't know what y'all got there. It's something in the water. But do we have anybody else expecting there in the zoo for 2023? Not right now. No. Right now, everything is kind of nice and calm on that front. We're in winter hours right now, which is just a great opportunity for all of us to take a breather after event season and sort of get things back squared away and spend some extra time with our animals. Um, So not right now, but hopefully soon, but not right now. And if folks want to come and visit the zoo, I know you guys were jam-packed with all of your great events over the holiday season. I don't know if you know of anything coming up to sort of share about or just your normal operating hours. Yeah, I know that um, RenFest is coming up in February, which is always um, a fun event. we got spring break coming up before we know it, which is always a lot of fun. There's tons of events coming up this year, uh, so just sort of keep a lookout on our, our social media pages for that stuff. Um, but lots of fun events coming up. Well, I appreciate your time. Give him a hug, because I know you probably get to see him. Can you <laughs> hug him? Have you hugged him? Are you allowed to touch him? Um, So we do socialization with the keepers and the baby right now. However, that ends very, very soon. You can only do it for a certain amount of time before they're just too big and it's no longer safe. But we have done some socialization with him where we have been very, very close to him so that he gets used to people and we can do things in the future like medical procedures and that kind of stuff. Um, So, yeah, I have gotten to touch baby hyena. It's It's been a lot of fun. It's a very, very rewarding experience for us. Well, I think you have a really cool job there, Kristen. I appreciate your time every time you join us here on Good Things, and you're welcome back anytime you got some other baby news there at the zoo. All right, no problem. Thanks for having me. All right, how cool is that? It would be the hardest part about being a zookeeper is not being able to hug and touch and squeeze and kiss the little baby hyena. And then you realize it's a baby hyena, and then your mind goes back to the Lion King, and you're reminded that they're not always the nicest animals. And so you just go on with your bad self. But how sweet is that?